So hi, I'm Jessica. Um, I am a recent graduate of the TESOL certificate program from York University and a, an accredited TESOL instructor. Currently, I am a full time ESL instructor with the adult education program for York Region District School Board and teaching everyday English classes previously in class and now completely online. I also have some experience teaching in Japan. Um, so uh, why TESOL? Um, I'm sure everyone in this virtual room has a different story as to why they pursued or want to get into TESOL education. Many career paths were different as we, as we saw earlier. For myself, pursuing TESOL was not my first choice. I first graduated from York University with a major in humanities. And my goal after graduation was always to teach K to 12 education. I was determined. I applied and had all my hopes riding on the one school I applied to. Lo and behold, I didn't get accepted. I had no teaching experience and aside from a peer tutoring course I took in grades 11 and 12, that wasn't something they were interested in. However, I was not deterred. Like, like the little engine that could, I decided to go back to school and major in English. I finished it in a year and I applied again to the consecutive education program, hoping that my uh, new English degree would be enough. Even though I still lacked the experience, <laughs> I had the passion and thought this is the career path for me. I'm sure you guessed by now since I'm sitting here, I didn't get in. <laughs> this time I decided, okay, maybe I should look at all my options. I went to a career counselor at York University who was extremely helpful and gave me multiple different alternatives. She had told me about a friend of hers who had taught ESL abroad and in Canada and suggested it could be something I could get certified in. And that would give me the extra teaching experience I lacked. It would give me an extra qualification also to put down if I applied for the third time to the consecutive education program. So that is what I did. I applied and actually the very next day I had received a notification that I had got accepted into York's TESOL program. Um, what I didn't expect, however, was that for my practicum experiences, both in Canada and abroad to really have an, a profound impact on my career path. Those practical experiences opened my eyes to adult education and TESOL as something I could potentially pursue. I was really inspired by the learner's passion and drive to learn English, each one with their own stories for being there. Even so, I had applied again to the K-12 education program, but this time I had gotten accepted. <laughs> uh, however, I was now conflicted as to where my passion truly lied. In May, I officially retracted my acceptance to the K-12 program and decided I would give TESOL a chance. I had come to really enjoy what I was doing and was touched by their stories and their intense desire to improve their English, either to meet their own personal English learning goals or to provide a better life for themselves or their families in Canada. Their determination almost mirrored my, my own. So I can safely say I made the right decision. And now I'm going to share some of my best experiences in the TESOL program. So you can go over to the next slide. So best experiences. Some of my favorite experiences in the TESOL program come from my practicums and having the opportunity to teach in Japan. I had two practicum placements, an observation at ULE, York University's English Language Institute, and in an ESL classroom with York Region District School Board, which really helped give me a complete uh, picture of the Canadian TESOL climate. I found both classes were entirely different as the learner's goals and experiences in each context varied greatly. I found myself really drawn to the ESL landscape as all of these learners were immigrants with certain desires as to why they were taking an everyday English course. Some learners were retired or elderly and just wanted to learn and others wanted to find a job and or a place in um, Canadian society. What they all had in common was a passion for learning and a strong inclination to improve their English. 
the York Region instructor who I completed my practicum with was excellent. And it was really her class that showed me what kind of ESL landscape I wanted to teach in. I saw how she cared about her learners and I liked the idea at the beginning and throughout the semester, the instructor performs a needs assessment to see what the learners want to learn, which can range from Canadian culture to health. So similarly to a, a university experience, you go in wanting to find yourself and what you want to learn. And so I, I liked that and mirrored that. My best experiences from the practicum was seeing the students' real life needs and desires met. For instance, there was a student who was looking for a home for him and his family. And the instructor, knowing the student's current needs, was able to help the learner by gearing a future lesson on home buying. My favorite experience of the TESOL program, however, was going abroad to teach students at Meiji University in Japan, like you saw in the previous photo that was some of our uh, students and um, fellow, uh, my other fellow TESOL uh, colleague. It was an incredible opportunity that was afforded to me through York's TESOL program. Accompanied by York University's TESOL coordinator, Antonella, um, we participated in language classes taught by Meiji University faculty and taught content-based classes in Canadian studies. This international experience provided me with invaluable knowledge, teaching a group of 70 plus international students and taught me how to adjust my teaching strategy, strategies to the students' needs and to adapt my teacher talk to connect with the multi-level learners. One of my favorite experiences while teaching in Japan was carrying out conversation based activities in the evenings. These sessions provided an opportunity for our students to converse with their peers in a casual and safe environment. We would play games like heads up and charades and it gave the learners a chance to practice their language learning outside of the classroom where they wouldn't have that opportunity otherwise because they're international learners. Both my practicum experience in Canada and teaching international learners abroad really helped solidify my continued interest in TESOL and gave me experience teaching a variety of different educational backgrounds with adult learners and international learners. I can go over to the challenges slide because with the best experiences, there's also some challenges along the way. <laughs> Um, so, some challenges I had when it came to TESOL was what comes after graduating. A double-edged sword, you're excited, you're ready to go out there, but um, you have the nerve-wracking job hunt. When you first graduate, every new instructor goes through the process of trying to find a TESOL position, whether it is abroad or here in Canada. Many positions require two to three years of experience, which as a new TESOL instructor, that wasn't something I possessed until someone took the chance and hired me. It took me six months to find a position teaching ESL and only one institution I applied to called me for an interview. I found what really helped me was the network I had created with professors at York University like Antonella and my practicum instructor who were both willing and able to give advice and offer references when I needed them. So networking is important. <laughs> I also found utilizing York University's Career Center by attending the resume and cover letter workshop gave me tricks on how to craft my resume and cover letter to potential employers. Uh, establishing a relationship with TESOL professionals and having the knowledge to be able to best advertise yourself to future employers, I think, really helped me get my foot in the proverbial ESL door. It wasn't much time after I found a job in ESL. So since graduating, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, I first worked as a supply instructor with York Region and currently I am a permanent ESL adult instructor with the York Region District School Board. It has given me a chance to work in a variety of multi-level uh, classrooms with learners of different skill sets, learning how to balance the learners individualized needs. Like a majority of teachers back in March of last year, we had to transition from classroom teaching to online instruction. 
So currently I've been teaching virtually and have been able to create a distance learning platform that combines synchronous and asynchronous learning and instructs the learners to utilize online tools such as Google Classroom, Zoom, and Quizlet to create exciting new educational opportunities um, that I think have really elevated and helped uh, in, um, English language learning in my classroom at least. I have taken this time to really utilize online tools in the classroom and hopefully going forward, once we return to in-class instruction, these tools can be incorporated to support blended learning opportunities. And I just have some last pieces of advice uh, for new uh, TESOL instructors. You can go to the next slide, thank you. Some advice I would give is to understand you'll always be learning and updating yourself. It does not stop after you get your TESOL certificate, um, especially in the current educational climate, if this year has taught us anything. I would also suggest if you're a TESOL student to take advantage of all the opportunities you're granted. Talk with your instructors and colleagues and network. It is extremely important for your future and moving forward. You don't know what those doors could open for you. It is your future and career. So go after any opportunity you can. I would also advise to attend TESOL webinars to keep up to date on current teaching trends and to become an accredited TESOL instructor as soon as possible. As most employ employers require you to be an accredited TESOL instructor in Ontario before hiring you. That was always one of the things I saw when applying. Um, my last piece of advice is you should love what you do and understand nobody is perfect, but as long as you're open to learning and growing, opportunities will knock and you'll be ready to answer.